Hey guys, we're back with the house in Fata Morgana. When we last left off. We're still in Michelle's flashbacks? He's alone in the mansion now. And yeah. So, I've been thinking. Is there gonna be another, like, mystery twist? Or have we revealed everything? And I'm not sure yet. If there is anything left to be uncovered, it has to do with the white-haired girl. There's that. Two things about her in Doors 1 and 2 that kind of stood out to me. One of them, Door 1, is a bit bigger, but not necessarily too big. Because I just missed it when I first saw it. It's uh, the fact that she turned the girls white. I don't know if that means anything more than it actually is or not. Like, it probably does. Because and when I first saw it, I was just like, oh yeah, it's uh, that one magician trick. You put the white dye like a thing but in your hand then you put it up the stem and you know but why would that why would white haired girl do that to show it to the maid there's the fact that the white haired girl can't remember kind of makes me think that it wasn't well no i still think it's michelle i've been that way from the beginning but now kind of starting to doubt is it michelle i'm not sure in on that one and in door two, there's the fact that the white-haired girl is blind. This one's a bit not not as significant as door one's, but that's still something that's interesting, I guess you could say. Door three, I can't think of anything that's sig as significant as those two. Like, the fact that she's blind could have some metaphorical meaning. And in door one, the fact that she is supposedly a witch could have metaphorical meaning as well. Door 3, though, I'm not sure. And, I mean, there's also the fact that she was born a girl. Because, as we saw last time or the time before last time, biologically, Michelle is at least more or less male. I'm not sure what exactly happened when Michelle was born. Because, like, a, what, what do you call it, like a, a birth defect, I guess? But something happened, and so the fact that in other reincarnations, Michelle, if they're the same person, Michelle's a girl is just interesting. I don't know. Just wanted to talk a bit about that, because lately I've just been reading, but because I didn't even think there's anything left to solve, but then I was like, wait a second. There's going to be a late game twist. I just know it. Feeling it. If there's an eighth door, there will be a twist. If this last door is the end, then maybe, maybe not. Oh, I, I thought of this earlier. I forgot to mention it. There is the fact that remember in the uh, shadowy things, didn't Mel have a new sprite? I haven't gotten back to look at looked at it, but wasn't the sprite different than we usually saw? I think that's significant. If that means Mel will return on camera long enough. To warn a new sprite. Not just like a one line appearance being like, Oh, thank you for bringing me for the curse! That's what male sounds like. So we had a cut of mid scene last time. Poor, poor child. By pretending to pity someone who had it worse than me, I was able to feel somewhat better about myself. Oh, it's that copper niche again. Because if I was in a position to pity someone else, then conversely, I, was, I wasn't in a position to be pitied. He's looking at a Morgana's corpse. Vainly, foolishly trying to convince myself of a lie. I spent hours, days alone in that tower, holding the dry bones in my arms. Now there was a side of, to lend credence to my alleged madness. Over time, the air in the mansion seemed to thicken, as if the fog were condensing. Water pushed out all the air, swallowing me up, suffocating me. Oh yeah, I took my finals today. Talked about them last time. I, uh, I think I did pretty good. I think on my science test, which was the one I was worried about, I think I might have gotten a B. Maybe a C. But I think I did good, hopefully. A putrid mire. A strapped at the bottom. I love this song, by the way. I don't know the name of this one. Of this thick, black sludge. Soon I lost track of the passage of time. My only landmarks being the dates on Mother's letters. Before I knew it, eight years had passed. What the heck is this? 
I hadn't heard my own voice in so long, I almost forgotten what it sounded like. Sounded like. There's a delivery that day, but it wasn't the usual package. There's gonna be the portrait, right? The servant was instead carrying a large rectangular object dripped in cloth. Shoving that into my hands, he said, The regular supplies will be here in a couple days. And then he ran off. Presumably, he was afraid to spend any more time than necessary with the cursed man. So did George's paint this? Or... Well, this, we haven't seen it yet, so... That... Or it... But I didn't bother to say anything about it. I knew it was a waste of breath. I was not inclined to hold it against him if he didn't want to look me in the eye to exchange words. All I could easily do was sit back and bear it. As long as I kept my mouth shut, the man could do his job in peace. By the candle light, I began unwrapping the package the servant had delivered. From within, a sheet of parchment fell to the floor. It said the package was a painting. Hmm? Just looking at it, I couldn't tell what it was. Except from the fact that it was a portrait of a woman. I knew those brush strokes, brush, brush strokes though. They were very distinctly George's. Okay. The woman depicted had white hair. White hair. There's a flash. A fresh shoulder of the pain that had nearly faded away. There has a half dozen needles piercing my chest. So much blood had spilled from those gouges I had lo long since lost any sensation of pain. This is a new song. But now I was back. No, George's. You didn't. My whole body froze. The blood in my veins came to a halt. Wonder if that was just done in naivety? Or if George's... My theory last time that... George's or Didier sent the knights to kill Michelle... Makes... A little bit more sense? If that's the case? I don't think Didier would, but George's? Like... Maybe. Like, maybe he holds a grudge for him. For Michelle yearning, well, yearning. Well, a lot can happen in eight years with a marriage. Maybe it has to do with Amy too. The blood in my veins came to a halt. I couldn't breathe. I was drowning in a pool of imaginary water. I crouched down to pick up a sheet of parchment. That was a letter in Mother's handwriting. Oh, first letter in, as it did in all of her correspondence. My beloved daughter Michelle. Every day I pray that your curse might be broken, but lately I've come to think that perhaps the reason you remain cursed is because you have forgotten what you're supposed to be. So long you have spent in that accursed form, it is little surprise you would lose sight of yourself. How can you return to your true self if you do not even remember what that is? So I asked George's to paint you a picture, hoping it might help you break free of your curse. You are a beautiful young woman, my dear, my dear Michelle. I presume you have already seen the painting. It is lovely, wouldn't you agree? That flowing white hair and skin like glass. Those deep, enchanting red eyes. Those slender fingers and modest, feminine frame. Those soft lips. It's not you when you're younger, though. Instead, I didn't imagine what you would look like now. That is what you will look like when your curse is broken. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, I guess George's didn't do that out of contempt yet. I don't want to doubt George's or Didier. I really like both of them. But I know this game, and I know what it'll do to me if I don't think ahead. Imagine it. Envision yourself, your true self. Remember who you are. Recall your true self. I wait eagerly until the, day, until the day you come back to me, looking as beautiful as you do in the painting. My dear, sweet Michelle, this is you. This is the real you. You're beautiful, my little girl, and I love you dearly. That awful fuss all those years ago, we can pretend none of that ever happened. We get all those dreadful things that curse made you. Get, become the girl you used to be, the girl you were meant to be. So we can once more be a happy family. I am waiting. Forever waiting for you. Wait, is the man in the painting? Is that George's? I'd have to go back and look at his dialogue. That was ages ago, but... I just realized. It's either George's or... Uh... White-haired girl number one is dead. Not sure which. <sighs> the letter ended there, leaving me with the woman in the painting staring back at me. I remember the man in the painting said there was someone who he argued with that he wanted to apologize to? Maybe? Was that George's? I don't know. Her eyes have noticed that I was not me. That she was the real me. That was nothing more than a fraud. Laughing at me, scoffing at me for ever thinking as anything but female, mocking me for stubbornly insisting I wanted to be a man. 
The pain in my chest swelled, spilling from my mouth in grunts and moans. And then... I screamed from the bottom of my lungs. Why? 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 I yanked at my hair. Why, Georges? Slammed the painting against the floor. You said I could believe you! You swore to the god of art! So why? Why would you do this to me? You said to yourself you didn't think I was cursed. You acknowledge me as your brother. You know this isn't me, so why? Why would you make this? I've been waiting for so long. I put my trust in you and Didier. I trusted you. I believed you'd always support me. What's that? All a lie? Deep down, you really think I'm cursed. Just like Mother. That's why you haven't written to me. Why you haven't answered any of my letters. Where did my faith get me? Why did you even help me escape? Was it all, for sure? Was my execution just a lie? An excuse for you to send me somewhere far away? Well, was it? Tell me, I mean, he's not here, Michelle. George's. Tell me the truth. Was it, what about you, Didier? Where do you stand? Uh, uh, uh. No, this isn't real. My voice was getting hoarse. I didn't have the strength to hold it in. Everything came spilling out of me, squeezed out by the phantom water. The white-haired girl in the painting just stared back at me, smiling. I bit down on my lips as hard as I could. A metallic taste spread through my mouth, drops of blood tricky, trickling on the floor. Pulling the knife I used to open the monthly deliveries for my waistband, I lifted it high into the air, gathering what remained of my strength. This isn't me! Slash the woman's face with it. This isn't me. This isn't me. I'm not this woman. I'm a man. Carved into it. This is not how I look. With everything I had, don't... Don't try to erase who I really am. Don't call me repulsive. Don't say I'm an abomination. Torn to that smile. Contempt surging with every slash. This woman isn't you. Wanted to curse this whole dang world. Pardon my French. Every last thing. This wretched mire that had become my life. My brothers, for happily going about their lives as they suffered here in the darkness. My delusional mother, for refus refusing to acknowledge who I was. My father, for trying to have me killed. Amy, for making me realize I was a man, and torturing me for coming out about it. Everyone. I didn't care anymore. Wanted everyone who had ever wronged me to suffer the same way I had. I can make that happen. Ah! Witch! A voice rang out. I can curse them for you, my dear. It was a woman's voice, muffled, like there were several walls between me and her. Who's there? Swipe it up with my candlestick, thrusting it forward to my to the sides behind me. But there's no one else around. Give it a little thought. It's not that difficult. When you figure it out, come to me. I've been waiting for so long for someone like you. Someone with such hatred for the world. How am I supposed to know who you are? How could you not, my dear? You visited me so many times. Held me in your arms. Whispered poor child in my ear again and again. No, it's not possible. Ah, uh, I see I finally truly lost my mind. That's what you wish to believe that's your choice. The way I see it, if you truly lost your mind, you wouldn't be in so much pain. The voice, still muffled and unclear, seemed to be coming from somewhere far away and very close at the, by the same time. By at the same time. Find your way to me and open the door once more. Let me out of my cage. Give me your hand. I knew in the back of my mind that it was all absurd, but nonetheless, I did as the voice said. I let myself be drawn in by the pleasant whispers. The Witch's Curse, that's the new scene. The Archangel stood proudly upon his glass bridge, looking down at me. His gaze almost seemed judgmental, but I marched forward the tower, unconcerned. <gasps> it's not playing the scene! For so long I have been waiting, waiting for the day I would be rid of this darkness. For the day someone would truly set me free. When I arrived at this house, I felt the hands of fate at work. That you were led here. That you were meant to come to this place. You've been through so much to get here. I know your pain. And all that feels to be locked up. I just thought of a, another thing in episode... Door 3. Not episode 3. That doesn't exactly fit. It's that carving in the basement Maria found. That's still... Like... Hold on, I, I have it saved. I have it saved. The pictures. It hasn't been talked about at all. So is that just one of those things that, like, when you reread, you'll be like, oh, hey! Funny name I can save this as, not BNG. Our life shall be forfeit to the witch's curse. Nevertheless, we must lay bare those with sin upon their souls, for the redemption of those who are pure. So we now we know now that the sinners are, uh, the three guys, Mel, Jacopo, and, uh, Yukimasa. 
anyway, for the redemption of those who are pure. Sure do you mean not to dispel your curse? I we are poor of you, old witch. Mark it with it only their bloodlines. The blood of the sinners flows through those who dwelt within this house, but not I. So, who wrote that? It wasn't Morgana. It wasn't... It wasn't Mel, Yukimasa, or uh, Jacopo. Which, was it Udor too, white-haired girl? Despite being blind? Was it... I don't know. Was it someone, like, in this time frame? Like, Giselle? No. Michelle? Maybe. But I don't think so. I was trying to think of things in Door 3 that would match my Door 1 and Door 2 of something kind of weird theory. Like, it's kind of grasping. Because, like, it, her being blind in Door 2 isn't too big. But at the same time, that's still enough that it's called into question. <sighs> Sorry. I know how it feels to be locked up, to be tortured and used for others' gain. You are the only one to ever have pity for me. I shall be the only one to have compassion for you. You are the only one to stay at my side. I shall do the same for you. You can give me life again. You can resurrect me. Now open the door, Michelle. I felt like I was no longer in control of my own body. Their voice was tender in a way unlike either Mother's or Amy's. Enticingly so. Standing at the top of the observation tower, I pushed open the door. The first thing I saw was a ray of light shining through the window. And nothing else. Thank you for opening the door. It was empty. The skeleton, which had been sitting there as long as I had been at, the, at this house, had vanished without a trace. I spun around, my gaze starting back and forth across the chamber, but there's no one there. Only her voice whispering in my ear. You made this possible. You gave me the chance to have my revenge. Revenge? Now I can make those men suffer a heck even worse than the one they put me through. Constant everlasting despair. Their flesh may turn to dust, but so as long as their souls live on, the torture will know no end. <laughs> the tenderness in her voice crumbled away, leaving only your old loathing, your loathing behind. She then let out a half muffled cackle. Who are you? Oh, you poor deal. They left you up here without telling you whose house it was? You're a sad, pathetic thing. Though that's exactly the kind of person I needed. You're, you're not the witch, are you? That I am. I'm the cursed witch. Who loathes this puny, wretched world. Curses it. And my name is Morgana. I like how it always says her name is the witch Morgana. Not just Morgana, but the witch Morgana. Morgana. I assumed the witch was nothing but a legend. A tale. If you don't believe me, I'd be happy to show you. Let's see. Place a curse on someone you have a grudge against. Drag them down into the dark abyss. abyss. You're the one who granted me freedom after all. Sympathized with me. Pitied me. Appreciated me. You happily embraced my filthy corpse. For that I will grant you your wish. Wishes can come true, Michelle. Much the same way I was able to come back to life, you remain steadfast in your desires. Is it steadfast or steadfast? They'll become reality. For devotion and yearning are the fountain from which miracles spring. Can I leave the mansion grounds? Well, that is but a minor inconvenience. Tell me who you wish to curse. I can lead them here. I can force the curse you are made to bear onto, onto them. I believe in my power to pour, perform miracles, because you made my miracle a reality. So tell me, my dear, who will be first? Your second brother who made that ridiculous painting? George's. Shall we kill him? He deserves at least that. He brought you more than enough pain. But if you would rather, you could curse your mother instead, or the woman who set you on this path. How do you know about that? Perhaps you'd prefer your father? With him gone, you could return home. Ask and I will perform a miracle for you. I didn't think she was lying either. As ridiculous as the whole affair sounded, the skeleton had disappeared from the tower. I was hearing a disembodied voice. But beyond that, the voice seemed to have a sort of magnetism to it. Magic truly did exist in the world, but magic doesn't exist! Witches don't exist! Then her words were laced with it. There is a power in her voice, something that repelled any instinct I might have to doubt the thing she said. So I, on the verge of losing my grasp on reason altogether, believed every word the witch said. I wanted to curse them. To curse my brothers, mother, father, Amy. And the witch was saying I could do precisely that. 
What will it be, my dear? There is no price. I don't require a sacrifice or a dark ritual to perform my magic. I simply wish to show my gratitude. I want you to have that which you desire. Who do you want to curse? The witch's sweet whisper is hung in the air for a brief moment before you're whispering, whispering away. Don't curse anyone, it's a trick! You gotta be good intentions! It's good intentions! All the muscles of my body tensed up. I felt woozy, like if the body, the floor was wobbling beneath me. It took everything I had not to fall over. Who did I want to curse? On you're welcome to choose more than one. All of them, even. I could curse them, and the witch would kill my family. I'd be free. No one would know I had been born Pino. Why don't you become the new head of the estate? Who would I curse? Who would I kill? Did you hear George's mother, father, Amy, all of them? They didn't sound me to this place. Have your revenge. A black butterfly fluttered across the room, single shaft of light. What's with witches and butterflies? Is that like a thing that I don't know of? Because Umi Nako did it. And this? It's, there's been butterfly imagery, I think. As I stared absently up at it, dozens of memories of emotions flashed through my mind. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, we're family. We can get past anything. With enough time, everything will go back to the way it was before. Just like it did for myself and George's. I don't understand. Why would I think about them now? They've abandoned me. Left me in that room for two years. They've left me here for eight more. They don't care whether I'm alive or dead. So why should I? Why should I? Thinking about ugly speckles. Have you made up your mind? I have. Then tell me, my dear, who will it be? Who will, who, who will you curse? No one. Yes, Michelle! The greater good! I cannot curse anyone, Morgana. Surely you jest. I know just how much you wish to see them dead. I felt all your hatred, your despair. And you mean to tell me you can't curse them? It struck me just now. That I can't do that to family. I cannot curse my own family. This is the family that cast you aside, labeled you cursed, made you suffer for years, and then locked you away in this remote mansion. They don't feel even the slightest bit remor remor remorseful about any of it. I understand that. I know that they don't give the same weight to their words as I do. I figured that out long ago. I know I'm alone in my prayers. They don't want the same things I do. But I trusted them more than they ever deserved. So why then can you not curse them? Because, because I don't want to hate them. I don't want to bring them suffering. On the contrary, I want them to be happy. You have no place in that happiness, though. It is a happiness that rests upon your misfortune. Why, then, should you not drag them down so you can find your spite in yourself? For yourself. I'd find no respite by cursing them. How can you be so sure of that, my dear? I most certainly find a great deal of it myself. You're trying to follow your conscience. I can see that. But that goat is superficial, and all it does is shackle you. Remove the shackles, and everything will be so much easier. Nothing you say can convince me to kill my family. Why not someone who isn't family, then? Surely you can think of at least one person you would like to see dead. Almost certainly can. I could kill her a dozen times, and it wouldn't be enough. But just because I would be happy with her death, doesn't mean there aren't people who'd be sad to lose her. Remove any one person from that group, and the whole thing could come crashing down. All because I couldn't restrain my own hatred. Your concern for them will devour you. Don't think... I'm not aware of that. You aren't. You don't know that at all. The only reason you give them any consideration is because deep down, you still have hope. But hope has a way of forsaking those who have given ho a home. You have a problem, and you need to take care of it before it kills you. You and I, we're cut from the same cloth. While you may still care for your family now, in time you'll come to curse them. Consider that a warning, Michelle. Your hatred, your curse, is what brought me back to life. And there's no getting around that. We do have plenty of time, though. I don't need to rush to a decision. I'll show you what it means to truly desire deep, deep down. I'll show you again and again until you finally acknowledge it. The black butterfly hovering above the window disappeared. The witch's voice grew distant. Overwhelmed, I collapsed to the floor unconscious. Had I really said what I did out of love for my family? Or was I just afraid of crossing that line? Was Morgana right? 
Is my heart now home to a terrible monster? I had actually resurrected the witch with my hatred. Maybe that was what I was now. Darkness seeped down over me once more. I was again encased in a pool of despair. Slowly, ever so slowly, it wore away at me, eroding me into nothing. I wonder how far door 7 is going to go. Like, do you think it's about to end with this scene, or do you think it's going to go, like, just before he meets Giselle and after he meets Giselle? I'm okay with more Michelle Giselle shenanigans. If I didn't come up for air, I soon would have taken the witch's offer. Cackling like a demon, I would have placed a curse on someone. I'd kill them. Reviving her was a mistake I should, never should have made. And not for the greater good or anything so noble. No, every time she spoke, a little more in my spirit died. From that day on, Morgana's voice became a constant fixture in my life. Curse them, kill them, curse them. She serenaded directly into my ear. No matter where I hid or how deep I put my fingers in my ears, her voice here sounded directly in my head. Hearing an incessant stream of curses from a disembodied voice was so unreal, so unbelievable, it felt as though I was being dragged down from the realm of humanity. There was an odd, unsettling magnetism in her voice, allowing her men men malevolence to seep into me. It was downright torturous. Curse them. Revile them. Do you really need to be in your right mind, honestly? The fixation on holding on to your sanity is what's causing you so much anguish, and it was a normal thing to do, actually. Admit it. There's more darkness. More seething malice inside you than anyone else. That's why you were the one who resurrected me. Admit it. You do want to curse them, don't you? You do want to kill them, don't you? No, I don't! I don't want that at all! I've told you this already. You're so desperate to deny it, Michelle. Did it only mean that it's true? You would be able to demand in your calm if you are truly free of guilt. I do not wish to kill the deer, or George's, or mother, or father. I have no desire whatsoever to see them dead. Their constant babbling is messing with my head. Be honest with yourself, Michelle. You do imagine what it would be like to hold their warm intestines in your hands, standing over their bodies. Uh, uh, ah, no, I, I don't. That's not what I want. Don't lie, Michelle. You climbed the tower. You opened the door. You sought me. No, I was... I wasn't in control. No, Michelle, you were. Oh, yeah! Has the, uh... The bottom we got a... Fan disc? I think it was a fan disc. Come out yet? When... When was that supposed to release? Was it... A bit later this month? Completely forgot about it. Um... Steam? Reload? Come on! Steam's actually just a dog. Gonna give it a treat. Okay, I'll wait for that to load. I'll be back. Enough! I'm done listening to you. <laughs> now, now, don't take your anger out on inan inanimate objects, Michelle. I wonder if the witch is gonna get a sprite. Because we saw that she had one in the Steam store page, I think, right? Oh, you started to get zeros out on Steam now. I played that on, on the Vita. It was... Pretty good? I there are some low parts of it, but there's some really good one parts of it too. But the house in Fata Morgana no no not the original soundtrack. I saw a red haired girl. Who is that red haired girl? It's on the soundtrack. She has a skeleton arm, braided hair, is holding a sword. There's butterflies. Huh. Oh, but it comes out in about two weeks. But yeah, I think... I don't, is that the same red-haired girl? Is that... The one I think is Morgana's bright. Is that the same one? I'm not sure. But it's a requiem for innocence. It tells the story of a tale of a young man dragged down by his... By his ambitions, a girl both worshipped as a saint and maligned as a witch. For them, there's no happily ever after. So is this the witch's story to fall, or or is this post plot of Morgana, or wait? Okay, okay hold on. I'm reading the street street port, uh, the summer. A young girl whose blood is claimed to have miraculous healing powers, kneels battered and beaten before the Lord of the land. In the village where she was born, she is worshipped as the daughter of God. Now the Lord holds his sword high in the air, moments away from beheading her. You're a danged witch wearing a saint's skin. We saw that. 
Before he could swing the blade, a young man interferes, saving the girl. We saw that. So begins the first happy chapter of the young girl's life. So the first act of the tragedy, tragedy that will span nearly a millennium. So is this just her story? No, Jacopo's there. Unless his name was Jacopo originally too. I'm not sure. Maybe. Possibly. I imagine we'll find out by the end of this if it's really just a prequel or not. Anyway, let's get on with it. Do you even know where I am? And where are you? Standing behind you. Yeah. In front of you. Yeah. Now I'm beside you. You're just playing around with me, Morgana. Mocking me for your own amusement. Not at all, my dear. In fact, I consider you a close friend. Why would I mock someone who means so much to me? We're not close. You'll come to understand in time that we're very much the same. And when you do, you'll also know that I'm the one person who truly understands you. Enough. Enough. Enough! Let it all go, Michelle. Curse it all with me. Despise it. Kill it. Make it suffer. Curse it. Please, just stop. Where might you be going, Michelle? Wherever you're going, I will always be by your side. Are you going to pray to God to exercise me? Now that's quite amusing, considering I'm the child of... Ha ha ha! Not trying to hurt you, Michelle. On the contrary. S stop talking. Please, just stop. I want to set you free from your misery. I wonder... So when she was telling the flashback, she talked about it kind of cynically. I wonder if she's gone through character development since here and I mean it has been like a thousand or so years maybe she's kind of realized oh yeah maybe I'm not the child of God and here she actually still thinks that because it's just it's just been not too long she said it was recently so like 100 200 years I'd say anyway I want to free you from your misery can't take it anymore please just be quiet who's there I am um, I'm here to deliver your monthly package. Uh, I see. Well, M Michelle? Um, is something the matter? I opened the door and there stood a servant in the Bullhunger estate. He seemed to be quite prepared by the sight of me. Must have looked terrible. Organa's voice, her words, set my spirit dry. A human. A normal person, not a witch or a spirit or a demon. I knew good and well that the servant would never do anything to help me. He wouldn't believe a word I said. But at that, at that point, his humanity was enough for me to latch on to. Help me, please. Pardon? The, the witch. She talks to me. She never stops talking. I'm begging you. Please get me out of here. Let me go back home in your carriage. Please, let me go back. The witch's voice. It's killing me. It won't go away. I can't escape it. Please, I need your help. You've gone mad. What? I mean, <laughs> you're crazy. Uh, see, this is why I didn't want this job. I haven't delivered supplies to this dang cursed mansion. I'm gonna get anywhere near the Bollinger's youngest child. Come on, servant! No, 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 I'm, I'm perfectly sane. That's what an insane person would say. You, you sold your soul to the devil. You don't think I'm in the dark about that. No, I did no such thing. You're completely insane. No. I'm done with this dang job. It's not worth all the riches in the world. Not if that means I have to be around a lunatic like you for even a minute. Well, we just got some guy out of a job. Why? I am not crazy. Perfectly sane. I'm not mad. Michelle, your mind is far, far from sound. <laughs> Stop laughing! I won't hear it. I'm not mad. Ding it! Not insane. <laughs> Won't hear it. End of scene? Nope. The witch spent nearly every waking moment of every day at my side, talking and talking and talking. But how mean spirited humans were. How ugly they were. An endless loop of vitriol. How do you say that word? Vitriol? Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. It. Father Morgana likes that word. I think I've looked it, up, looked it up before, but it's not a word I use often enough or hear often enough to remember. Vitriol. Vitriol. Every single day, on and on and on. She was made a point of reminding me about myself. Everything I was trying to get away from. But as much as I fought to ignore her, to not let the things that she said in, she slipped past every wall I put up. Her every word wrapping around me. There's no escape. Curse them. Revile them. Remember. 
Remember the things they did to you. Close your eyes and envision it. Remember. Remember the scorn in their eyes. The way their lips twisted as they laughed. You need only curse them. They can wipe those rep reprehensible sparks out of existence. I'm serious. Please stop this, Morgana. Please stop talking to me. I'm begging you. Seriously can't take it anymore. Oh, now why would you say that, my dear? It's just the two of us in this gloomy old house. I don't see what's wrong with a little conversation. Your voice, everything you say, is hitting away at me. I care for you, and everything I say is meant to help you set, set you free. So I will continue saying it. You're allowed to hate the people who have wronged you. They don't deserve happiness. Someone who's always smiling for you is someone who's certainly to, certain to betray you. Someone who values themselves above all will not hesitate to put others' lives on the line. Someone who covets wealth and power will sacrifice his friends and family to obtain it. These are the kind of people you were once surrounded yourself with. I've told you repeatedly that I will not curse anyone. Why must you be so stubborn, my dear? I could ask you the same. Why won't you just leave me be? Because I can't stand to see you like this. The one word you could be free of your pain. Because you insist on shackling yourself to get the idea of family, you're making yourself miserable. You're the same type of person, Michelle. The type who has the right to curse others. Regardless of what kind of childhood you had, how much hatred is instilled in you, Michelle, you're a cursed man named after an angel. You need to realize how twisted you are. And soon. I'm not... twisted. Do you honestly still believe you're normal? Tell me, what's normal about someone who happily embraces a skeleton? Tell me, what's normal about someone who hacks away at a girl's face with a knife? Oh, that's why her hand was a skeleton! If... Morga if Morgan is that red-haired girl in the OST cover... You know, because... She's a skeleton. I... I... Wait, did I read all that? What's normal about someone who hacks away at a girl's face with a knife? You're not normal, and I'll repeat it as many times as I have to. You need to accept that. Why must you hold so tightly to your sanity? If you had just let go, you wouldn't have to suffer. No one is going to come and save you, my dear. The only thing you could save anymore is your loathing. They could save you anymore. I... We're the same. I'm nothing like you. I am not a witch. Not cursed, I'm human. I'm a human. Man? Yes, a man. With that body? <laughs> oh, my dear friend. Let me tell you something you should be quite pleased to hear. Do you know what some say people about some say about people like you? Those who are neither male nor female? That they're like unto God. Like unto God? Indeed. You should have been worshipped for your divinity, but instead your family cursed you. You're not human. When the second life was first breathed into you, your fate was decided. No, you're wrong. If I really were wrong, you would not be here now. You'd be back home with your family. Perhaps you would have a pretty little wife, living a normal, happy life together. But you've long since strayed from that path. It's well out of sight now. I'm not. I'm human. I'm a person. I'm a normal person. The youngest son of the Bollinger estate. I'm an ordinary man. No one, not a single person, believed me. Not even the witch was willing to consider me human, never mind my family. The Archangel, whose name I shared, looked down on me. The witch tried to drag me into her world. My past constantly ate away at me. I had been imprisoned in this place for far too long. There's nothing I could do about my body. All those things combined threatened to break me. I let out a scream, then I stumbled out of the room in a frenzy. I had to get out of that place. It didn't matter anymore that I was forbidden from leaving the property. I just wanted all of it out of sight. They wouldn't let me come home, then I'd run away. That's all I could do. I wanted to get away from anywhere that might have even the tiniest bit of light to share with me. I was desperate. Someone! Anyone! Please! Tell me I'm human. Tell me I'm a man. Anyone. Please tell me I'm not cursed. But when I opened the front door, searing light pierced my eyes. Ah! The world quickly went white. I couldn't see a thing, and then... Uh... My arm began to burn beneath the sunlight. Ah! Ah! Black smoke rose from my sizzling flesh. A sickening stench filled the air. Ah! Excruciating pain quickly spread through, through, to the rest of my body. God. Well, 
why am I? Ah, ah. What? What? Slam the door shut, restoring darkness. Gas began groaning and trudged back into the house in search of water, which I'm sure the witch Morgana observed with a great deal of pity. I don't think you're in need of any water. Take another look at yourself. <sighs> ah. With what little my light managed to warm its way into the corridors to guide me, I dragged myself to the chapel, stopping beneath the pale light shining through the stained glass window. Ah, uh, how? I wasn't burned. In fact, my skin hadn't even turned the slightest bit pink. There's nothing wrong with me as far as I could see. Where did that pain come from then? Morgana! The distinct stench of burning flesh? Th this is... This is your doing, isn't it, Morgana? I knew it! I know what you're experiencing. It happened to me too. Sometimes enough emotional distress and despair can cause physical pain. The mind and body are much more tightly linked than you think. Your mind is far more damaged than you know. You poor, poor thing. You have my sympathy, my dear. Said little child. You sad little child. Collapsed on the floor in front of the multicolored window. It felt like the whole world was closing in on me. And perhaps metamorphos mor metamorphosing around me. I was completely and utterly cornered. There's no getting around that. Which left me with only one option. To stop fighting and accept the harsh reality before me. It would make everything so much easier. The whole world said there's something wrong with me. And I was the only one who tried to deny it. So in the, in the world's eyes, that meant there was something wrong with me. I was abnormal. I was irregular. I was mad. I was cursed. I was not human. I was... not a man. If I'm not human or male, maybe I should just call myself a witch. I did, however, remain firm in my refusal to kiss anyone, unwilling to give up that last piece of my humanity. Everything else, I let go of. Which took a great deal of weight off me. I stopped caring, and I stopped thinking. I stopped wanting someone to accept me, and I stopped wanting to run away. Sunlight no longer caused me agonizing, unseen burns, and it exchanged. in exchange, I became emotionally empty. I discarded my faith and my hope, building a shell of cynicism, and closing myself within it. And in time, that became my normal. I began to believe that's what I, that is what I wanted. Tranquility filled my days. Time trudged onward at an almost in, imperceptible pace. The witch's whispers no longer caused me aggravation. Okay, there's the scene then. You think that's the end of the door? Fireplace. Okay, okay, we're still here. The scene didn't change, but I think that's a good place to call it. We're 40 minutes in after all. So I'll see you guys next time with some more Fada Morgana. Uh, maybe next time will be the end of door 7, because I don't know how long we'll go on. Like, maybe we'll see some more of a uh, door 5 stuff from Michelle's perspective. I'm not sure. It's possible. But I'll see you guys then. Bye.